What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at OS 10.11. So this is also known as El Capitan, and is replacing Yosemite. Right now we're in the beta process, so we'll see a final release this fall, along with iOS 9. Now, this is not a major update here, but there are some major under the hood changes which dramatically improve performance. But in this video, I'm going to focus on the new features. Now, one of the biggest new features is Enhanced Spotlight Search, which now has natural language search, which makes it a lot more powerful. So, for example, if I'm going to search for emails from Mike, I can type it right in. I can spell it correctly. You can see it searches my email library for those emails, but I can also see emails from October, emails from Verizon, that sort of thing. It's really cool. I can also search for things like weather. So, if I just type in weather here... You can see if I give it some time, it will pop up my current location with the current weather conditions. I can also search for sports scores. So I can see Tigers at White Sox. You can see the final score from the previous game and the schedule ahead. Now we can also resize Spotlight Search or move it around. We also get a revised version of Mission Control, which allows us to drag and drop windows to new desktops. So I can just drag and drop this app to a new desktop so I now have a full screen view of that app. Now, if I want to go back to Mission Control here, I can drag and drop another app to that window or to that desktop and create a side-by-side -side view. So now when I go to there, you can see I have this side-by-side -side view of email and Safari, which I can resize here by dragging and dropping the divider. Now, to get rid of one of these desktops, just hover your cursor over the window here and you'll get this X icon and it'll close it out and merge everything back to the desktop. Now, we can also create a split screen view by tapping and holding on the full screen icon on the window and snapping it to the left or right side. And now we can open up another app on the right side here for the split screen view. And if you go to Mission Control now, you can see that we have the separate desktop just for those two apps. Now, if you want to change the order here, just slide them from the left hand to right hand side. Now, one of the questions I got is what happens with continuity in the split screen side by side view? Now, what seems to happen is continuity only works with the currently active window. So if you're working within the mail app, this will change to the mail app. If you're working within the notes app, this will change to the notes app. So that's how it works. Now, it's very similar to windowed app. So I have to click on this app to get my controls or my menu bar for the mail app. I have to click on the notes app to get my controls for the notes app. Safari also gains pin tabs, which you can activate by swiping in from the right to the left side. So now we have a pin tab for The Verge, pin tab for 9to5Mac, and pin tab for 9to5Google. So that means no matter what happens here, I can close out Safari and bring it back up, and it'll restore those tabs to where I last left them. Safari has also added the option to mute audio coming from either your tab or from all tabs. So with audio coming from a specific tab, you'll get a little icon that you can click on and off. Now, if you want to mute audio coming from all tabs, you have an icon in the URL bar. Now, just like with iOS 9, the Notes app in OS 10 has also been updated. So we have things like recently deleted. So if you've deleted Notes, you can access them once again. You also have new folders. So you can create new folders within the Notes app, which is very nice. We also have rich text editing options. None of this was available previously. So you can create a checklist, bullet list. You can set this to a title or heading or just use this as body text. Uh, so for example, if you want to create a checklist, you can select this and you can go to this markup language here or just use this little icon to create the checklist. So just like with the iOS 9 app, when you're done with your checklist item, just check it and you're good. You can also insert photographs from your photo library and they give you this little navigation tool to find the photos you need. We can also quickly glance at all of the attachments within our notes so we can see photos and videos, sketches, map locations, websites, audio and documents. Apple Mail has also been updated. So for example, if you're looking at an email, you can now minimize that window and jump back to it by clicking on the item down here. But if you're composing an email, you can do the same. So let's say we're composing a new email, but we want to go to another email to copy and paste something here. We can click and drag the specific item here and drag it to that email into the body. Now, very similar to Finder or Safari, you can actually open up separate tabs for new messages. So if you're composing a new message, you can open up new tabs and jump between them so you can compose multiple emails at once. Also new in Apple Mail is suggested contacts or suggested events. So if you receive a new email from a new contact, you'll get the option to quickly add it to your contacts or if the body of the email includes a calendar event, you can also add it to your calendar. Now there are countless other smaller features. One of them is the cursor. So if you're navigating through multiple windows, you can easily lose track of your tiny cursor on a large display. So all you have to do is swipe your mouse really quickly to enlarge it so you can see where it is. Apple has also finally updated the iconic spinning beach ball, which is the waiting icon there that appears when something is either hung up or you're waiting to load. Uh, so we finally get an update here, which is much more consistent with the new aesthetic. We also get two new share sheet options. So we have one for notes and one for reminders. So if you want to share an item like a photograph, a document, a web link to either your notes app or your reminders app, you can do so. So for example, if you want to create a new notes with this link to this YouTube video, you can do so, which works pretty easily. 
Also new is a Find Friends widget. Now previously Find Friends has only been available on iOS. Now it's finally made it to OS 10 as a widget. So you'll have to add it here. So if I go to edit, you'll see Find Friends is now available. So I can go ahead and add it. So this will update me on the locations of my favorite contacts. We also get a completely redesigned disk utility. So we can see our Apple SSD here. You can see how much space I'm taking up and what's taking up the space. You can also go to your first aid utilities for improving performance if something is wrong. Uh, you can also see your petitions here. So you can manage your petitions, you can manage your images and more. We also get some new settings under the settings panel specifically for force touch trackpad users. So we now have this silent clicking option. So if you click this on, you no longer get the artificial sound of the mechanical click that completely turns off, although you still feel the vibration of the click. Another welcome new feature is available under general. You can now automatically hide and show the menu bar. So this means the menu bar will hide until you take your cursor up to it to reinvoke it. Very similar to hiding the dock. All right, guys, so that is my quick look at OS X El Capitan. Of course, things will change before the final release, which you can expect this fall. And as those changes happen, I will update you. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.